Back at it again with another video, guys. It's your boy, Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber. And this time, I'm going to be reviewing Yakuza 6 for the PlayStation 4. And this is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. And this is the last um, ep the last Yakuza game, actually, to have Kiryu Kazuma as the main protagonist. Basically, if you were to look at it, like his story has gone almost 30 years. From the time he was 20 to where he's at now at 40 was he 48 in Yakuza 6 so it's a long story franchise you know and I'm just happy to be able to review it so thank you to Sega for allowing me this opportunity to do so so let's go ahead we're gonna get right into this video I've really got to tell you how much of a fantastic experience that Ryo Gagotoku 6, also known as Like a Dragon 6, or in the West known as Yakuza 6. Man, that was such a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful evolution for the series, and I feel it was a step in the right direction. As objectively, the evolution works and makes gameplay more seamless and fun, while retaining most of the old gameplay that the series is famous for. And while providing better graphics, a still phenomenal soundtrack, and a story that's just so bang up that it's just horribly misunderstood by a majority of the fan base, especially when you have those who think the Yakuza is nothing more than Sleeping Dogs or the Japanese version of uh, Grand Theft Auto, which it's not. And, you know, what's funny is that a lot of the fan base actually don't have a good working knowledge of Japan's history, even a lot of those in Japan. So hopefully with this review, I'll be able to shed some light as to why this evolution is a great step forward. And as always, we'll begin with the gameplay. Everything you know and love is back in six and a lot of it is even better than before. The series has always evolved and gotten better at seamlessness through title to title and six is the best title yet. With real time transitions into fights, and entering and exiting shops and buildings. You can have a continuous session of gameplay without any interruptions and get quite a bit done. The fighting system has been revamped and while many moves are similar to the fighting styles of previous games, they have been slightly tweaked for a new ex fighting experience of sorts. Hostess clubs are back after their absences in Zero and the new format makes it much easier and more enjoyable than hostess clubs in the past. Even for someone who does not speak Japanese, it was easier for me to handle the question and answer parts. The arcade minigames are back and they have added a few more from Zero. So you have Virtua Fighter 5, you also have Puyo Puyo uh, being some of the newer additions. As well as the completely revamped darts minigame, which is now much less luck based and more skill based and as it should be, which is something that it bothered me about the darts in the past games, as well as in Shinmu, among other titles. The addition of the Sony Xperia smartphone is welcome as well, as the interface of the menus is based around the phone, and you can take advantage of all the real-life features such as the camera, other apps, actually connect your real-life Xperia to the controller, and play with that. If you own one, which I previously have, then this feature is insanely convenient, if you can utilize it. The CP system is back, however, it is in a way a bit more broken down into specific areas and elements, as opposed to just one lump CP bank. This allows for more varied ways of upgrading either Kiryu or your clan members. As well, these points can be now gained from mundane tasks, such as eating at a restaurant or getting into a fight. And, you know, vending machines are another way of gaining these points, and they can affect many different parts of Kiryu's character for a temporary part of time, such as upping the money received for fights, gaining more, a certain CP, etc. As well as like in actual, you know, real life Japan, there are vending machines literally everywhere. It's the same here in Hawaii. With a whole slew of different drinks to choose from, and the gameplay has been scaled down in some ways, some various ways. And to start, there are a whole slew of weapons in the game. However, they're only available during battle and cannot be purchased, modified, or accessed outside of battle. Adding to that, there are many, many heat actions in the game. 
though there are not the 150 plus that Zero had, but they are just as brutal and vicious. And another gameplay area that was not well received was that the Park Street and above is inaccessible for the entire game. Though again, this hardly detracts from the game. The addition of Onimichu uh, varies the gameplay up in a large way and it is wonderful to explore yet another location in Japan. The new mini games, namely Spear Fishing, which is challenging and a ton of fun. Uh, there's Sandlot Baseball, which is arguably one of my favorite mini games in the series. It's loads of fun and strategic as well. And the Granddaddy, your clan creator, which will also make a return in Kiwami too, which will eat up a good part of time and is a ton of fun and are more than welcome and work perfectly in the context of the game. Clan Creator also features six prominent Japanese wrestlers whose likenesses are captured basically to the T. And as mentioned, well received or not, the evolution of the series is a step in the right direction and things will assuredly go up from here, from a gameplay standpoint especially. Another step in the right direction was breaking the series story formula which worked brilliantly in 6. Now in 6, Kiryu wakes up from his blood loss induced blackout to the cries of Huruka, coming to rescue him. Kiryu transported to the hospital, though the things he has done in the events of Yakuza 5 have the police coming for him in Sejima. They are both going back to jail, though Kiryu for much longer, while Sejima would just carry out the remaining months of his sentence. Haruka and Akiyama have a discussion that has Haruka realized something truly saddening. Her idol days are over and coming out as the adoptive daughter of a Yakuza will have her and those close to her be instantly and constantly hounded by those wanting to get information and tabloid scoops. Come a few years later, Haruka has left Asago and has started a new life in parts unknown. Kiryu is released from prison a couple years later, and the orphans tell him of the happenings of the previous years. While they also reveal that Haruka has left them, Kiryu ventures back to Kamaruto uh, for the last time to, a certain, to ascertain exactly what happened to his adopted daughter and what he can do to make things right again. The story is nothing short of brilliant, and it is also an evolution. As the writers have broken the codes and conventions of the past games, have gone in a new direction. This new direction was absolutely, well, for many, not well received by fans of the series. But that absolutely does not mean that the plot is bad. It's just different. The plot include, also includes triads for more than one chapter for the first time, which I feel is a more than welcome tradition. And we've had fighting between Yakuza clans, between Korean Mafia, and now triads, which is tied in well to the main plot too. The reveals and characters introduced throughout the game just enrich the story even more. Though I must put out there that a decent knowledge of Japanese mindset and Japanese history, specifically World War II history, will allow one to understand the plot even more, and this is another reason for certain plot points. Okay, now with the sound, arguably the best part of the game, the soundtrack, the voice work, and sound effects are simply outstanding. Beginning with the voice work, the voice actors have simply done it again. With, with Takeya Kuruda being the standout he always is, and Rei Kagimiya, Kugimiya, I hope I said that right, doing a great job as well. Tetsuya Fujiwara returns as Kiryu's understudy, though this time as Yuta, and does a phenomenal job as well. The addition of Chinese voice actors is superb as well. With such seamlessness between languages, they do brilliant work. The best of all, the guest stars though, is undoubtedly Takashi Kitano, who does arguably the best guest voice work in the entire series. The man just exudes character both in the tone of his voice and the demeanor of his voice. There is a reason why he is one of Japan's biggest stars on any medium. The sound effects are fantastic as well, with all of your crashing and bashing to fill your enjoyment meter up, as well as the wonderful sounds of the sea and the baseball diamond in their respective minigames. 
The best part of the sound element in this game, however, is quite clearly the soundtrack. Huge Lynch and Zenta are back to rock you with incredible tunes. But there is some wonderful mood and atmospheric music as well that fits the game brilliantly. Adding to that, Tsuya Yamashita provides the opening and closing themes and they are wonderful tunes indeed. Fitting in with the plot of the game and the events just so well. Now let's go ahead and get into the graphics because the series has gotten revamped. Title to title, though I still feel like 4 in a way looks somewhat worse than 3, but I digress. The step up to a new engine and developed exclusively on a current gen console has displayed the best graphics yet in the series by far. I will admit that all the characters from past games look slightly different here and there, but their realism is much more accurate and their models are done superbly as well. The locations look phenomenal and again incredibly realistic. I would have to easily claim 6 as the most realistic looking title in the series and by a wide margin. Playing on your Xperia as well as displays, wonderful graphics, and no slowdowns or other issues. I can honestly say that I've never run into any of these situations or any situation whatsoever as I own both a launch day PS4, PS4 Pro, as well as a PS4 Slim. Thus, you know, your mileage may vary. Another puzzling part of the graphics is that the game is 30 frames per second, which hardly detracts from the game. But, you know, it looks just fine, it's just a bit different than Zero, which was in 60 frames per second. It's great stuff all over. Now, let's go ahead and get down to the replayability. You will be playing this game for at least 65 hours, which is a lot of time to be standing playing a game offline nowadays. However, as veterans of the series can attest, this is arguably shorter than the other games in the series. For my taste, this is perfect, because life is so busy nowadays. And while many may see the lower amount of time as a bad thing, again, evolution-wise, it is more for the modern workaday world that the already long length of gameplay has been shortened to fit the needs of the modern adult gamer. The minigame completion is no longer as ridiculously extensive as it is in other titles, though it will still require quite a bit of time as well. The extras in-game will keep you more than occupied for a while. Thus, the replay value is high with 6. The one of the questions you might be asking is buy or rent, uh, and I'm going to answer it right now. This game's Casanova approved, thus meaning buy the game, support the franchise, enjoy yourself, and be happy you played such an amazing title. You know, and after reading so many skeptics and negatives about the series and, you know, the, the reviews for the Japanese version which came out a year ago, I admit that I was a bit apprehensive in playing it, and I probably put it off, you know, a bit longer than I initially intended to. However, 6 has proven that you really need to play things for yourself, and that's one thing I like to tell people, especially anyone who reads reviews or watches gaming YouTube channels, you need to play things for yourself and make up your own mind before listening to others. The story is indeed amazing and you just need to understand the context behind things and the fact that the script was flipped at times makes for a fresh new adventure. The gameplay is much more refined and focused even if it has been scaled down at times. I find it makes for a more fun and efficient experience and if this is going to be the look and feel of the series going forward, especially on PlayStation 4, then I think fans are in for a great time and that the series will go nowhere but up. The changes work superbly, the game looks and sounds brand new, and most important, this is a very fresh title and a welcome addition to an already phenomenal series. Now, if we can just get a, a Yakuza collection for PS4, possibly even bring this over to the PC, or Sega, if we could possibly get this on a Nintendo Switch, I could play Yakuza on the go, I think this would be a phenomenal thing to happen. All in all people, Casanova approve. Go out and support Sega and get Yakuza 6. Alright, with that being said, I want to thank Sega again for allowing me the opportunity to review this game. I'm very, very, very grateful for that opportunity. I've enjoyed Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Definitely love it. I'm also going to be picking it up. I'm gonna, I have the collector's edition uh, with the two, uh, the whiskey cups. 
I've got that pre-order, so I'm looking forward to that. I can put it on my shelf with all my other collector's items. And I, I believe, even though I get review codes from companies, I strongly believe in buying the product as well to support the companies because there's a lot of men and women that put in a lot of hard work to um, make these games for us. And I, I feel like by buying the games and supporting the console, uh, supporting the platform, the game it comes on, it, it, that's a way of showing gratitude to the companies. And I'm very, very big on that. So again, Sega, thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Let's try and get some this to probably like 100 likes or so. And definitely leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. If you liked the video, if you didn't like the video, and then we can go from there. All right, guys, it's Mikhail Casanova. Deuce is wild, too sweet, be the elite, and I'll catch you on the next one. You got the spotlight, girl, you demand all the attention Starry eye, maybe I need a new prescription I, I, I see you on top of me, I'm having visions While you spin it around, I'm getting dizzy, baby Drop and roll, hot